Okay. Let's be known. My name is Ilya Puhalski. I'm working for EPAN right now uh, as solution architect. Um, correctly, I'm working for EPAN Mobile Competency Center. Uh, my competency is cross-platform solutions. It means mobile applications, desktop applications, and I don't know smart TVs and everything that could be done in a cross-platform way. It doesn't mean I'm working only with JavaScript and web technologies. It means that I'm touching as well, I don't know, native programming, I'm touching Xamarin and all this stuff. It's already a potential, you know. Who is web developer here? I mean, touching JavaScript every day. Okay, not so much people. Um, who knows the difference between web application and website? When I started working on this slide deck, uh, I removed this slide from my slide deck, what's the difference, because every time I'm speaking at some conference, I'm putting the slide into my slide deck. But anyway, I will... I will explain. Uh, for example, we have Starbucks.com and Gmail. Everybody knows Starbucks and Gmail, I guess, right? Um, the first one is website. It's static content, works everywhere because of responsive web design uh, and so on. Um, it's content driven. It means we go there to get content. Uh, for web applications, it is in commonly one page that drives with JavaScript to load necessary data to build new controls, new components, and so on. And we go to Gmail to make some task completed. For example, we want to check out our mailbox, right? To answer emails and so on. But for me as developer, the key difference is that the first one is website we know probably for 20 years, right? Like HTML pages, static content, probably not so static because of backend, but anyway. And the second one is single HTML page and everything is JavaScript doing. Um, okay, my topic is about cross-platform web applications. It means that, web, that this web application should work across all device types. For example, mobile phones, tablets, uh, desktops and laptops and so on, and smart TVs. Um, and the first question is, why should I care about every device type? Okay, let's dig deeper into the history. Okay, who know? Who knows what this, this huge blocks with tapes and so on? <laughs> yeah, of course it's computers. Yeah. And what's this thing? It's mainframe. It's uh, 1966. The cost is about, you see, three million dollars, right? 2,200 pounds, and computing power like modern microwave, like. Um, next thing is iPhone. Everybody knows what's iPhone, right? I hope so. This is the first generation of iPhone. Um, yes, yeah, so and computing power is like NASA has in 70s. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, 2005, Pope Elections, and 2013, Pope Elections. I guess everybody saw this picture on the internet. Okay, right now we already know that mobile is a king. We should care about mobile phones and tablets, because the usage of mobile phones and tablets are growing every day. But we shouldn't forget right now about desktop, because desktop is the main user context right now, I guess. 
and smart police as well, because this is mobile traffic for 2012 and growth, growth of mobile traffic as well. You see smart TV platforms are growing probably more than 100 persons each year. Yes, we have responsive web design, right? Everybody knows what's responsive web design. Yeah, this shiny web technique to make content um, adapting for different width of device. But we have a lot of problems with responsive web design right now. Probably with images, the problem will be solved in, I don't know, in some time. But we have navigation problems. What we should do with tables, audio and video, and other stuff. Okay, we have, you know, <laughs> it costs a lot. Uh, and we have user interaction problems. It means that uh, right now we have different devices in different device types. For example, on mobile phones we have touch screens. On desktop we have, I don't know, mouses, right? And on smart TVs we have only D-pad and controller and we're sitting in 10 foot from TV screen. Uh, as well as we have Blackberry devices. I guess it's pretty uh, weird devices because they can have three different uh, user interactions, user interaction types. It means, for example, uh, physical keyboard, as well as touch screen, as well as this ball you can use like a mouse. I don't know how to pronounce it or how to call it. Anyway, it's a big problem because um, different device types needs adaption for this user context. And as well as we have content adaptation problems, because, for example, if I have this cool Nokia phone, yeah, probably I go to the web page to get only address or phone number for any company, or if I have smartphone, okay, I should have the best user experience I want to have. A responsive website is not automatically a mobile-friendly website. It means that it adapts content, adapts layout, user interactions to all the platforms together. Okay. Probably you have right now a question if you are native web de native uh, mobile developer, you have your own project or startup or I don't know pet project probably. Uh, should you care about web? I guess you should because you know what the situation works for user right now. Is he working on? Laptop is he working on mobile phone or whatever device it, ha it has. One more thing. It's Facebook uh, daily active user statistic for probably July. And we see that almost 80% of US Facebook users are mobile. It means not only uh, native mobile. It means mobile, native mobile together with mobile web. I guess I read somewhere that uh, Facebook shared the statistic for um, mobile web and it says that mobile web users uh, are commonly go into Facebook with uh, mobile web and native application. As an example I can give you Wunderlist uh, it works everywhere. It works on desktops, it works on uh, mobile devices, and it has, as well as web uh, application, it has native applications for all the platforms. If you want to know how it works and how it was done, you can ask me after the, this session. 
Okay, let's go with the problems of web applications right now. We have a lot of mobile operating systems on the market share, like Android, iOS, as well as Simban and Samsung Beta and Blackberry and so on. Probably we can add Firefox OS, we can add, I don't know, Sailfish, uh, Migo, and so on. And some Android facts. You know, different screen sizes and different resolutions. As for iOS, probably it will look like this. Probably we can add one more screen for iPhone 5 and iPhone 5S. And different browsers as well. Let's talk about access to device features from the web, from JavaScript, I mean. It's very, it's very tiny, yes, right? You can access only battery from some devices, from some browsers. You can access, I don't know, GPS and location. You can access, yeah, accelerator for probably only iPhone and Android. I'm not sure about Android. Um, and so on. No, not so much. Get user media. Yeah, get user media right now. Thank you. Um, but it's pretty strange how it works anyway. Um, we have really complex, comprehensive architecture of web applications right now. Uh, it's really difficult to maintain. It's really difficult to write a really smoothly native-like web application. We have problems with touch events, even right now, even with Internet Explorer 10, even with other browsers. You can add here other input types already discussed. We have problems with scrolling areas and sticky elements, even right now. We have problems with animations and heavy DOM animations as well. Uh, there is a lack of additional interface elements. It means, for example, slider, sliders and ranges uh, are not working everywhere right now. And the problems are sticking together with uh, when we are trying to make our application native like look and feel. We have a lot of solutions right now in the market share. For example, Relic. Can the UI or jQuery Mobile or Sencha for uh, mobile web applications and can the UI and Sencha as well for desktop? But the, <laughs> these frameworks are like have two parts of one framework: one for mobile apps, the second one for uh, desktops. Okay, I will tell you a long story how I was trying to make some parts of the some parts of libraries and frameworks working together. At first I was looking on Kenda UI and started working with Backbone together with Kenda UI. It works fine for mobile. It was a little bit heavy, but every, anyway it was working. But as for desktop, I don't need to switch I, I, I needed to switch Kenda UI to another library. It, it was a huge deal because everything from mobile part was not working. The same story was with Backbone together with Jukware Mobile. You can replace Backbone with Angular, Knockout, whatever you want. Anyway, the situation will be the same. Okay, I started looking for idea how can I make a uh, really cross-platform web application and requirements were at first it should be scalable and maintainable. It should be modular, it should be high reusability like even across the apps. It should load only necessary data on the necessary uh, page and it should have good support range. Okay, the same, sorry. 
as well as it should have different uh, view layer and different um, templates probably for different device types because for example on mobile I shouldn't see the same as I want to see on the desktop and it was an idea let's look how common web application can look like on desktop for example it has one page and four components on this page for example on tablet it will have two pages with the same components but with different templates for example for component one and three and for forms we will have three pages here we should load every component right from starting the application here we should load only two right okay let's go to the magic um, then we should switch templates probably for this for every device type for every uh, web application okay the idea could work then we'll have something like this this is a tree to, to make cross-platform web application I guess I will um, we can discuss it a little bit later and as for the solution we should have three uh, parts of this solution the first is core modules and helpers the second components that will be reusable and the third one is UI elements to fill the gap between all the browsers that doesn't have for example range or for example I want to make a toggle button like I have on my iOS on iPhone Okay, what's about core modules? Here we'll have script loader, uh, interfaces or classes for component view, model and so on, router and history, page switcher and some additional stuff like device information and user input adapter. Um, my idea was to make component load only when it's necessary. It means we have placeholder. It could look like this. Like we have data component with component class and data ID for component instance. It means that we can make, for example, three instances of one component on each page with different properties assigned to each instance. Okay, it could work. Let's go. There. Um, okay, how can I make component loading only when it's showing? Pretty nice trick to make it work. For jQuery and Zepto, it will work like this. We will trigger, we will extend, for example, show, HTML, append, and so on, all this stuff, all these methods working with the DOM. We will extend and triggering. Uh, event to our core module to load necessary child components in this HTML that will be shown or shown all, or it will be appended to some element. Okay, for components right now everything should be fine. Um, for pages, okay, everybody knows how in backbone routine works, I guess, right? We have rows. Here we can place any anchor we can add to URL. Then we should define root handler. Here it is, okay? And here goes the magic. We'll have the div element with the same uh, ID for with, with the same attribute for uh, data page, like we have in rows, in root handler. And it means that we can we can show this page and make it uh, make the animation when we trigger this route, right? Amazing. Okay. But here's a lot of work to do anyway. We should define animations. We should define full packs for uh, all all these browsers. Oh, it's Russian word, right? Sorry, tricks. Yeah, uh, CSS animations, 
uh, a pretty nice thing to go, but anyway, we should add tricks to make it work smoothly. For example, like <coughs> GPU acceleration, like back face visibility adding to prevent blinking, uh, and so on. And yes, it works together with routine automatically. One more interesting thing we have done. You know that we have a different uh, types of user interaction events like click, like touch events, like pointer events and so on. We, make, we made an adapter on all this stuff and one event to rule them all, tap. It means that the solution detects what the device it has right now running and you can interact with this with any device with tap. As well as we have swipe left, swipe right, but it's not so common. As for helpers, we have caching mechanism that caches every template already was loaded and refresh, refreshes this uh, template every time for when we get the new application version and you can add manifest to control this world and some other stuff like device and browser information to detect CSS animations to detect is it touchable or not and so on you probably know it from modernizer and one more thing to hide address bar on iOS and Android as well Okay, let's go to components. 10 minutes is not so much. The solution makes MV, I know, asterisk, uh, architecture on the component level. It means that we have inside the component uh, model or collection with the view. It is the placeholder you already seen. Here is how we can define it. If you are familiar with AMD, you will be familiar somehow like with this. And the component is pretty simple. You can add the collection and view. And we extend it as well, view and collection, to work automatically if you have uh, data with right URL and, I don't know, template with right URL and so on. Okay. What is component? Component is like widget. You know what's widget, I guess. It has connection to backend, to storage side, where it gets data and it has template to render it. Okay, let's go to your element. What the difference? Difference is that UI element is just extended uh, HTML, okay, DOM object. DOM object. It means, for example, for this toggle we should write label and input and it will be transformed automatically to something like this to work on all devices. Let's go to communication mechanisms. Of course, events. We have two types of events. First one are fired only when something uh, has been done. Has been done. And the second one are comments. Here comments are pages show. It means please show me the page with such ID. Or app navigate, navigate to this rule. And so on. Component with this ID, please refresh itself. The same for another levels. For component, view, collection, model, and, and so on. Okay. What we can improve in this architecture, okay, we can go to the server side, right? Everybody knows that your browser lies every day to you. It means that feature detection is good on the client side, but browser and device detection is necessary evil, you know, right now. And the more experienced a mobile web developer is, the more they rely on server side browser detection. We can, we can use a lot of libraries to 
maybe device detection works like Purful, OpenDDR, and so on. Some of them are open source, as well as template rendering on the server side. You know, we can pass HTML instead of data and template. It's not so flexible, but it will work faster in some situations. As bonus, um, we already made this as a framework based on Backbone, and uh, it will be open sourced early next week. Why early next week? Because I want you to have a great weekend. Follow X Framework JS to be notified when it's be open sourced. Anyway, thanks.